How's it everybody and welcome to another episode of Hotbox featuring Sylvanas Windrunner, the Banshee Queen. I have no time for games. Sylvanas Windrunner, otherwise known as the Dark Lady, the Banshee Queen, Queen of the Forsaken. She was once a member of the High Elf Race and the Ranger General of Silvermoon. Born to a prominent elven family, the Windrunners, she is the middle sister of Illyria and Verissa Windrunner. During the events of the Third War, the corrupted prince of the neighboring kingdom of Lordaeron invaded Quel'Thalas. This prince, of course, was Arthas Menethil, later to become known as the Lich King. Sylvanas and her rangers tried desperately to halt his scourge invasion of Quel'Thalas. Fall back to the trees! You've won through this gate, Butcher, but you won't get through the second. The inner gate to Silvermoon can only be opened with a special key, and it shall never be yours. You waste your time, woman. You cannot outrun the inevitable. You think that I'm running from you? Apparently, you've never fought elves before. But, due to the superior numbers and tirelessness of the Scourge armies, Sylvanas and her troops were ultimately defeated. During an attack on her base of operations, Arthur singled Sylvanas out and the two faced off in single combat. Anara la Bellari. Finish it. I deserve a clean death. After all you've put me through, woman, the last thing I'll give you is the peace of death. No, you wouldn't dare. But Sylvanas was cut down. Arthas, not content to let Sylvanas off the hook that easily, desecrated her spirit, bringing her back from the dead and binding her will to his own, making her a slave and the first of the High Elven Banshee. Forced to take part in the assault against her own people and the destruction of her homeland, Arthas made sure that the former Ranger General was aware of her actions at all times, but yet unable to stop herself. Following the fall of Silvermoon and the fall of Archimonde at the World Tree, Ner'zhul, who was still the Lich King at that time, began to lose his powers. And as he began to weaken, so too did Arthas. And as Arthas weakened, he lost control of the scourge that he was controlling, Sylvanas being among them. Taking this opportunity to stage an ambush for Arthas, Sylvanas succeeded in severely weakening the Death Knight. Although he was furious at her betrayal, he demanded that she finish him quickly. However, Sylvanas refused to give him the mercy of a quick death, opting instead to make him suffer as he had done to her. What is happening here? Sylvanas. You walked right into this one, Arthas. It's time to even the scales. Traitor! What have you done to me? It's a special poisoned arrow I made just for you. The paralysis you're experiencing now is but a fraction of the agony you've caused me. Finish me, then. A quick death? Like the one you gave me? No. You're going to suffer as I did. Thanks to my arrow, you can't even run. Give my regards to hell, you son of a bitch. Back, you mindless ones! You shall not fall today, my king. This isn't over, Arthas. I'll never stop hunting you. Unfortunately, before she could start torturing the former prince, Kalthazard arrived and chased her off. Thereafter, Arthas went to Northrin to become the new Lich King, and Kalthazard went into hiding. With her free will returned to her, Sylvanas, along with the Dreadlord Verimathras, gathered all the other undead who'd regained their free will, 
and took the fallen city of Lordran for themselves, forming a new faction called the Forsaken. From here on out, we shall be known as the Forsaken. We will find our own path in this world, Dreadlord, and slaughter anyone who stands in our way. Since then, she has allied her undead Forsaken with the Horde and played a role in shaping the Horde throughout the World of Warcraft storyline. Apparently, she becomes the new war chief in Legion, but we'll see how long that lasts. I'm just saying, it could happen. War Chief of the Horde isn't a very secure job title these days. In Heroes of the Storm, Sylvanas is a ranged specialist, adept at taking out enemy minion waves, taking out mercenary camps, taking out enemy forts, and, well, taking out enemy heroes. She's recently undergone a major change in the recent patch, but I'll spare you on how much that upsets me. Sylvanas's trait is Black Arrows, which makes attacks and abilities stun enemy minions, mercenaries, and towers. It's basically the ultimate pushing ability. Enemy fortifications and minions are unable to fire upon you, your minions and your allies while you whittle them down and top out that siege damage meter. This trait can be upgraded to add a stacking slow to enemy heroes affected by it at the level 16 tier, which is honestly bullshit considering the mechanics of her Q ability, which is Withering Fire. This will shoot an arrow at the closest enemy. It can hold up to 5 charges and it gains a charge whenever a nearby enemy is killed. This is her bread and butter damage ability. It's instant cast and auto targeting and it will ensure that the Q button on your keyboard is thoroughly faded. At the level 4 talent, Withering Fire can be upgraded to have a longer range for that extra poke or upgraded to store up to 6 charges and able to fire faster. Her W is Shadow Dagger, which will damage an enemy over time and spread to nearby enemies like a dank meme. This is your number one pushing ability as it will spread the stun from Black Arrows to anything nearby. A well-timed Shadow Dagger will disable an entire minion wave as well as the enemy fortifications. It will also spread the stun to mercenaries, making it useful for taking camps and counter-pushing. Her E is Haunting Wave. This will deal damage in a cone and you can reactivate it in flight to teleport to the wave's location. This ability does moderate damage, but it's the teleport on reactivation that's really useful. It's got such a long range that it gives Sylvanas a level of mobility that very few heroes share. Even when they get Bolt of the Storm at level 20, you're still not as mobile as Sylvanas is with Haunting Wave. The level 13 talent is where Haunting Wave really becomes bullshit. Take this talent and Haunting Wave will refill all Withering Fire charges and you'll be able to cast it again within 5 seconds for free which will refill Withering Fire again. Now if you took the level 4 talent which gives Withering Fire 6 charges then you can seriously pump out the damage. I mean just, just look at this. And that's at level 13. Sylvanas herself only has about 2.4k HP at that level. I'm eventually gonna get Carpal Tunnel Syndrome from this hero. But not for the reason you just thought of. Sylvanas' first heroic is Wailing Arrow, which will deal damage and silence enemies upon detonation. You can activate it again to detonate it early, or it will detonate automatically at max range. The silence is 2.5 seconds long. This has a million different uses, whether it's securing the kill from distance, safely disabling that ETC or Nazebo channel, or giving your team that edge in a team fight. That 2.5 second AoE silence is devastating in a lot of situations. Sylvanas' nice. second heroic is Mind Control. Now this is a channeling ability that lets you take control of an enemy hero's movement for 2.5 seconds after a short delay. Now at first glance you might be thinking, big deal, Zagara, Anubarak and Stitches are way better at tilting the odds in a team fight. But the truth is, 
mind control's range is ridiculous. 2.5 seconds might not seem like such a long time, but that's like an eternity in a team fight. That redonkadonk range lets you pick out the healer way in the back and force them out of position or remove the enemy initiator and place him at a safe distance from the rest of your team. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite heroics. It's got so much utility. And at level 20, you can talent it to make your target's movement speed increase by 100%. So you take control of somebody's mind and then they start running furiously with vim and vigor wherever you want to place them. It's amazing. And there you have it, Sylvanas. To me, and especially in my hands, she's the most broken specialist in the game. Which hero is your favorite? And which hero should I do in the next episode of Hotbox? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys. See you next week. Love and peace.